Hello everyone and my name's Bobich. Welcome back to some more Star Citizen. Yes, I really ended up with foot in mouth syndrome over the last video, didn't I? So is this game finally playable was the question that was asked and I tried to lay out some tech specs and reasons for why the specs for it was so high at the moment as well as when we will see some improvements. As it turns out, that video has been the most polarising I've made so far, and the comments range far and wide from troll-like to insightful reading. So I thought rather than just try and answer them all by text or ignore them altogether, because that's not very nice, I'm going to try and do some more clarification for you all. And this isn't going to be a, hey, I'm right, CIG are gods that walk upon our earth and you're all dingbats, self-promotion kind of video. I know I'm bound to fuck up, and as balanced as I tried to be in the last video, I know there was still a lot of questions. Couple that with the fact that CIG are merely mortals like the rest of us, and they too have had a lot of problems dogging them in the past, means that I'm not going to shamelessly defend them either. There is a lot that is left to be desired with the company, but we'll get into that. I'll start out by offering a little apology to the miners, who I irked the last time round by getting irritated for RAM prices. Yes, RAM prices indeed are being shafted more by the manufacturers, not so much the miners, so sorry. But you're all still numpties for making my graphics card upgrade cost so much more than it was actually worth for my desktop. From the off then, the top comment from Tiberius says, It's alpha, not a game yet. It's an embryo. You're not a player, you're a tester. Whilst he's a bit blunt, he's essentially correct. We're testing this thing to break it. Breaking is actually quite funny sometimes, depending on what you get up to, but this thing is still very much in its testing phase. There was a lot of comments referring to the content that you can currently play in the alpha, be that how long it takes to do everything, versus the scope of how little there is to actually do. This is true. There aren't many gameplay loops in the alpha at the moment. There's mining now, but that's about it, unless you don't mind being a space trucker in a single star system, or you get your kicks from dogfighting. The other side to this is that the way to look at it differently is that it's a giant sandbox, as I said before. Until we get those gameplay loops, then you have to make your own content. People have been doing it a great deal. Sync's done events most weekends, and lots of other orgs schedule big dogfights, races, or scavenger hunts as well. It's a mixed bag, this one. So I understand the plight of those wanting more, but right now the core mechanics of the game need to come first. This leads us back into the performance discussion. I gave a little primer about the OCS, or Object Container Streaming, last time around, and why it's going to be so important, nay vital, for September's big update. So now I'll go into a little bit in a little bit more detail and give you a bit more information. The fundamentals laying it out simply work like this. Imagine the current star system, Stanton, that's in the alpha right now as one giant container, an object container. Currently, when you're playing the alpha, your game client as well as your computer have to render the entirety of everything that is in that container and keep that information up to date on the fly, constantly. As well as bouncing the information back between the server, which I should point out is having to do the same as well as do all of CIG's backend gubbins. This means that every moon, every outpost, every NPC, every player ship, every player, every weapon, every little piece of everyone's outfits, such as using a grenade so that grenade vanishes off the user's armour because the quantity decreases, everything is shown and streamed to your computer. Every interaction between all of these objects, from shield impacts, ships crashing into each other causing mess collisions, spoiler, the servers hate those, every missile, every press button of a terminal, right down to every single individual bullet fired from every single ship, has to be updated on the fly all at once to both the server and your game's client. This is why, for the most part, most people's PCs simply nope out when forced with the client. So, now you imagine the playable universe as a giant container at the moment with everything inside it, now imagine if you could take this object and break it down into smaller bite-sized objects. For example's sake, let's focus on a moon, say Daymar. Daymar becomes its own object container, and thus becomes a container within a container. This is what OCS is designed to do. So if you aren't on Daymar, you don't need to know anything about what's going on down there. If you aren't there, then it doesn't give your computer hardware the information, and your computer doesn't get slowed down by the performance weight of that information. It builds on this further. On Daymar, there's outposts. Buildings on the surface with NPCs inside. This outpost can also be a container. If you aren't on the inside, 
you don't need to see what the NPC inside looks like, where they're moving, or if they're interacting with another player, which you won't see because you're not in there, and so on. Same with big ships. If you're not on board, the server might need to render the cockpit, or the bridge because you have a physical view into it, or certain rooms if you can see into those, but as for the rest of the ship, you don't need to know if another player is in bed or on the toilet because you aren't on board. On and on it goes. For the bigger ships on the way, like the Idris or the Javelin, even the Bengal when that becomes a thing, individual sections, rooms or ship hangers will become object containers as well. They are only streamed into your client when you need to know what's going on in there. You don't get the whole lot at once, which is why at the moment, the performance of the client as well as the performance of the servers is bad for so many people. With object container streaming, the universe will exist as containerception, containers within containers within containers, and only the ones you need to see or be affected by will be streamed to your machine when they are needed or when you're nearby. Oh, that was a chat, wasn't it? Okay, I hope that answers some questions in that regard for some people. The next point, why is this thing been in alpha for so damn long and when are we getting a game to play? Air quotes. Like I said, as much as I enjoy messing about in the alpha, I won't defend CIG to the hilt, and I do think they've made a lot of bad decisions over the running course of this game's history. The marketing, how ship sales have been handled, the overarching scope of the game changing every 5 minutes, as well as new features being added every other 15 minutes, thus creating horrendous feature creep, are to name but a few of the issues of the greater whole. There's a lot of murky water in CIG's pool, however I do feel now they've got a decent handle on the reins and they are doing well to keep going with the quarterly releases. If they keep this up then things will only improve from here with the game itself and the gameplay content. We can only hope they clear up some of the aforementioned problem childs that have given them so much backlash in the past along the way. It really goes without saying that even without all the feature creep, I don't think that this is a game we could have expected in 5-6 to six years, because its scope was so large from the outset. That said, there was also a lot of toing and froing about what they were going to do, and everything being run by Chris Roberts beforehand as well. There's a lot of ups and downs, and I personally just hope we keep seeing the ups from now on. As for a playable beta, I would say a safe bet is 2020. A long time, I know, but as I said, keep in mind games with this scope take so long to make. My favourite archetype for this is Final Fantasy XV. It took over 8 years for it to come out on consoles, and pretty much 10 years before they perfected it and made it into an epic port for PC gamers. A decade! So games like this aren't fast. And if Star Citizen goes all the way, it will redefine space sim games. It's a hard sell because of all the negativity in there about it, both past and present, but picture what it can do further down the line, when CIG finally stops warming up its tyres, so to speak, and sprints for the home straight. The final point on this is money. Scam citizen, I saw a lot in the comments. Colossally unhelpful, but even you can see the point of that comment. All that money and not much to show for it, and people are getting annoyed that their money is taking too long to come into effect. The only thing I can really say to that is that everyone who pledged and has given money to the project hopefully knew what they were getting in for. I wasn't part of the original Kickstarter myself, I actually bought my first game package in 2015. So Star Citizen already right, had its fair portion of steam behind it at that point, not to mention a fair amount of bad press as well. So I only bought the standard game package with an Aurora and left it at that. I only started to pledge more when I was enjoying it more even though it was still a buggy mess, and most recently more so when I was enjoying making the content that's on this channel for you all. Everyone's got their own approach to how they pledged, and what they expect out of it, which is why we say if you want to pledge, don't sprint straight for a $300 spaceship and then expect to own the world with it. Buy a starter ship, leave it at that, and wait until more content lands, dipping your toe in with each content patch to see how you feel. Personally, I'm enjoying the pace of playing the new shiny stuff, and then playing other games whilst we wait for more updates. That and making content you folks for you folks and giving a look at what a medium build kind of PC can do with the client. Because I don't own a batshit insane PC myself. Thank you again folks, I hope this answers some comments from the previous video. As always, if you've got more ideas or something you'd like to see, then let me know. I'll see you all next time.